name's Ginny Robson. I'm an infectious diseases physician and microbiologist working in a large clinical diagnostic laboratory, Sullivan Nicolaides Pathology. Each week throughout the year, my department monitors many of the infectious diseases that are in circulation, including respiratory viruses like the flu. Sometimes the word flu is used incorrectly to describe the common cold or other respiratory viruses. This is because their symptoms can be very similar. Usually, however, influenza is more severe and lasts longer than a cold or other respiratory illnesses. Remember, flu is a virus and not a bacteria, and so that's why it can't be treated with standard antibiotics. To explain a little bit more about the flu virus, it's actually a group of closely related viruses. There are three types that have been identified, influenza A, B and C. Although we think of influenza as being a human illness, the natural host of influenza A is actually aquatic birds and many different wild birds, poultry, swine, horses and dogs, as well as humans, succumb to this infection. Influenza B is predominantly human, as is influenza type C, which generally causes mild respiratory illness. Influenza A is classified into different strains based on two very important proteins embedded on the surface. These are the H and the N proteins, and there are many different types. You've probably heard people talking about H1N1 uh, for swine flu or H5N1 for bird flu. The H protein allows for attachment of the virus to the human receptor cells in the respiratory tract and after multiplication in these cells, the N protein allows for release of virus so that it can go on and infect another individual. One of the key features of influenza viruses is their ability to change the surface proteins uh, that are key to the immune response. This may be minor from year to year, um, but occasionally uh, influenza viruses from different species get together and mix, such as in, in chicken markets where there might be pigs and birds and humans, and there are dramatic alterations in the surface proteins that humans have no immunity or recognition to them. This sets the scene for the development of pandemics. One of the exciting developments in the laboratory is the ability to diagnose respiratory viruses, and in particular flu virus, very rapidly. In the past, it took four to six weeks because we measured the immune response and antibodies, but now we can detect the virus directly using uh, newly developed genetic assays. This is important because it helps us um, reduce uh, the uh, spread of influenza virus from person to person uh, and we can implement infection control precautions. Secondly, it reduces um, the prescription of antibiotics and thirdly, if we, we can um, uh, use antivirals in those most susceptible. Okay, let's talk about the flu vaccine. First of all, it's important to appreciate that you can't get um, influenza from the vaccine. Flu vaccines available in Australia do not contain live virus. They are grown up in hen's eggs and then deactivated and killed. This means the vaccine cannot cause flu. So certainly the flu vaccine lowers your risk of acquiring influenza. It also reduces the time that you might be laid up in bed or miss work. Um, and the Australian government recommends that every one of us over six months of age should be vaccinated against flu. Remember, the flu shot is not absolutely protective, however, but the risk of getting flu is reduced by about 40 or 50% in people who receive the vaccine. This might seem low, but experts still suggest that it's still worth having. So how can we protect both ourselves and others from this potentially serious infection? Well, I think the best advice is for all of us to get vaccinated every year. Secondly, uh, if we are in uh, are unwell and think we might have the flu, then stay away from others. And thirdly, practice good respiratory hygiene, coughing and sneezing into tissues that can be thrown away and good hand washing is always essential.